Hello, I'm Stefan Hell from the Max Planck Institute for Biophysical Chemistry in Göttingen. Hi, I'm Ilaria Testa. I'm doing my postdoc in Stefan's lab. We would like to make you familiar with our paper, Nanoscopy of Living Brain Slice with Low Light Level, presenting a new microscopy method able to image tissue, living tissue, with extremely high spatial resolution. Now, as you certainly know, since the end of the 19th century, it has been widely believed that the resolution of a light focusing microscope has come to an end. Features residing closer than about 200 nanometers cannot be discerned in an image. This has been the reason why electron microscopy was developed, but as you will appreciate, with an electron microscope, it's not possible to image living cells and living tissues even in three dimensions. Now, since I have not really believed in the end of the light microscopy resolution, at least for fluorescence imaging, my lab has been constantly working on breaking the diffraction barrier and coming up with a light focusing fluorescence microscope that has a much higher spatial resolution. Now, meanwhile, this field of super resolution fluorescence microscopy is quite evolved. Many techniques in fact, have been named that provide a higher spatial resolution. However, today we are going to report about the technique which keeps us really excited in the lab. Our approach is named Resolved. Resolved is related with STAD, that is one of the most established super resolution methods nowadays. But Resolved outperforms STAD in image living tissue in a number of aspects. So let's see how a Resolved microscope works. Now, since brain tissue is very scattering tissue, we have implemented uh, the resolved microscope similar to a STAD microscope, a confocalized STAD microscope. In STAD microscopy, we have an excitation beam, but on top of this excitation beam, another beam, a redshifted beam, uh, that turns the fluorescence capability of the floor for off by providing photons that instantly kick the molecule from the excited state down to the ground state. And so those molecules that reside at the outer part of the excitation region are usually turned off, they cannot emit, and fluorescence generates only from a smaller region because only there the molecules are allowed to be on. And so if you scan the two beams across the specimen in a stand microscope, we get um, uh, a higher spatial resolution, as has been demonstrated here by Urban and co-workers in, in 2011. Now, how does Resolved relate to STAT. The disadvantage of the STAT microscope is that um, it requires relatively large intensities because this off-switching of fluorescence has to happen within a very short period of time, maybe the lifetime of the dial, which is just a nanosecond. Now the decisive trick in the resolved concept is to use another on-off switching modality of the floor 4, which relies on long-lived states, on metastable states that have lifetimes of milliseconds. And these lifetimes give us much more time to play the on-off game. Uh, with the dye. And so we use a reversible switchable fluorescent protein that not only can be excited to produce fluorescence um, in its on state, but can also be um, uh, excited to be turned off. It goes to a deactivated state, to an off state. In this case, the uh, switchable protein is not capable of emitting any fluorescence. And so we can switch it back and forth. And as you can imagine, we can play the on off game now at much large, lower light levels, simply because the lifetime of the states involved is longer. And these reversible switchable proteins that we use here can be switched many times, more than 2,000 times back and forth. And now, the implementation of the resolve concept is just done as in a stat microscope. We have the uh, on-switching beam that is purple in here. It's overlaid by a, a blue off-switching beam. And now, by adding also an excitation beam, the, uh, <clears throat> the core-line scanning of the beams across the tissue turns the molecules on and off and at the same time reads out their fluorescence. And as in a stat microscope, we get a much higher level of detail, but at much, much, much lower light levels. In fact, you can continually image the tissue uh, and get a level of detail that is unprecedented, uh, but at very, very low light levels. So this slide demonstrates the gain in spatial resolution. Here you can see actin in a dendritic spine. While the confocal recording looks quite blurred, the resolved image reveals substructure in the spine head. This type of recording can be performed not only on the surface, but several tens of microns deep inside the living tissue, while keeping the highest spatial resolution. So these experiments tell us that we can image um, uh, neuronal tissue 
at a nanoscale at very low light levels over extended periods. And of course, this will also be possible um, to do in a, in a living uh, animal, in the brain of a living mouse, for example. And this is, of course, a very exciting avenue because we get access to a level of detail in the living brain tissue that has not been possible before.